Hi everybody, this is Christine Bertram and I am coming to you live from the Hive on Thursday night. Woohoo! <laughs> we just finished up a video that featured the classes. It's, I call it my month, like my showcase video. I always do it towards the end of the month after I have all the cards designed for the upcoming months so that you guys can see them. So if you missed that with me live, I literally finished it about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I had a run inside and get a bite to eat and go to the bathroom. And that's why we're a few minutes tardy tonight, you guys. So if you missed that video, you can definitely go in and catch the replay of it. So let's see here. I got to find, hi, Laura Sullivan. We're back. Woohoo. And we're live. <laughs> and let's see which one it is. I want to make sure that I get to the right video, you guys. I'm wearing the same shirt. <laughs> hi, Karen Wetstein. Hi, Deb Norman. Hi, Doris Munson. Okay. I am live. Let's see if this is the right one. <laughs> I think it is because you guys are saying hello again. Woohoo. Okay, so I think I got my video up here. Hi, Linda Hall. All right, so if you guys missed the video that I just did, hi, Donna Simmer. It is about 45 minutes long and it goes through all of the things that I'm doing um, in the stamping community in my world um, in July. Um, hi, Cindy Runtree. Hi, Francis Rodriguez. Um, you can definitely catch the replay for that. And um, yeah, a lot of fun stuff coming up in July. You guys, it's going to be great. We're going to stamp our, <laughs> we're going to stamp all summer long here. Hi, <laughs> Kathy King. Hi, Betty Pyle. So what do we have tonight, though? We have, I confused some of you guys, I think. <laughs> Hi, Patsy Hudson. I, I think you guys thought because I went live an hour early that class was an hour earlier. But nope. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a fly by the seat of my pants sometimes. And those, um, <laughs> Hi, Elaine Rebeck. Hi, Angela. Hi, Mary. Hi, Jean Terwilliger. I uh, had just gotten those texture chic cards done. I literally finished them at 4.10. And I'm like, I need to do the live real quick. But I was waiting to get them done until we, um, until I did the showcase video. So, <sighs> okay. So tonight is sun prints. And before we do sun prints, though, I do want to share with you, um, in case you guys didn't get that video, hi, Robin Stender. Um, if, if you didn't catch that video, I'm going to do in a nutshell what's coming up really quick. Um, I have here for next week, Thursday, you guys, next week, Thursday, if you can see back there, I do have some pumpkins from June, the pick a crop pumpkin. Hi, Linda Hodge. Hi, Jeannie Parker. Hi, Melody. Um, hi, Karen Ann. I do have some pumpkins left. So if you didn't get your pumpkin subscribed in time and you're needing a pumpkin or want a pumpkin or you want an extra one, whatever the reason may be, I have five. At the moment, I have five extra pumpkins and they are for sale. Uh, they are $26 um, if you want to do a porch pickup. If you want mailing, they're usually six bucks to mail them. So that is back there. And if you guys can see, I've got on display what we're going to be doing for the Summer Creative Escape. So lots of pretty cards. Yay. Hi, Carmen Melendez. Hi, Jean Maxwell. Hi, Joanne McDonald. You made it. Yay. Okay, so um, hi, Philly. So this is just to recap what we're doing for next week is the ink, paper, scissors. I always like to give you guys a little preview of what's coming up for next week. Um, this one pretty much is sold out, you guys. I made 60 sets and they're gone. <laughs> so and I got to make swap cards for tomorrow. <laughs> I got to remember that. So that's why that's on there. So that's next week. Tonight, what we're doing, though, is we're going to be doing these beautiful Sun Prince cards, you guys. So in a moment, we'll get started on them. But I did want to... Hi, Shirley. Hi, France. Hi, Deb. I wanted to share with you guys the sampler. In case you guys didn't see or see any of the emails I've sent out or catch this, I do have the Holiday Mini Catalog DSP sampler kits available for purchase. You get all the white paper printed. You get all the color swatches and all the designer paper swatches, all the specialty, and you glue it together. Hi, Annette. Hi, Lynn Beasley. Um, hi, Jennifer. So you get this as a kit, you guys. I have maybe 16 left. It's amazing. Um, Tom and I, my brother and I, made 48 of them this past weekend, and I have 16 left. Naomi and Jeannie Parker, I did get you signed up. Doris Monson, I have the three of you, I got yours signed up today. So I have 16 left after those three gals um, put in for theirs today. Um, it's $26 if you do porch pickup. It's $26 if you want me to mail it with your summer creative escape box, and otherwise it's $10 for shipping. Um, so it's $36 if you want it shipped to you. So um, Feline got her paper pumpkin yesterday. Awesome. Hi, Millie Kindle. So 
Um, Kelly will be live with you guys on Monday night for Paper Pumpkin, okay? I actually, I realized, I remembered yesterday that I, I'm going, my, one of my best friends has a family vacation every year. And last year, where they were going got double booked. And so I've had this on my calendar for the last year, that June 27th, 28th, and tw no, yeah, it's next week. It's June 27th, 28th, and 29th. I'm going to be with my friend and her family. I take all the pictures for them. <laughs> for three days, I take as many pictures as I can so they have memories. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, yeah. So Mon Monday night, Kelly's doing Paper Pumpkin. And then I'll be back on Thursday night with you guys to do uh, the Ink Paper Scissors. Um, for Ink Paper Scissors, Jeannie Parker, it's Happiness Abounds. It's the suite is called Hues of Happiness to make it confusing, right? The stamp set is called Happiness Abounds. Hi, Mary Lemke. Um, and so I'm not live or in person um, on Wednesday night like I normally am because June 29th is my mom's birthday. And I know I said, I said this last year. I put a call out that if anybody wants to send my mom a birthday card, you just reach out to me and I will reply with her address. And you guys spoiled her with cards. She is my number one helper. She touches almost every piece of paper that I put in a kit, I think, because she is always there helping me by my side, kidding up your cards. Um, she is also the one to said to, she said to blame her if you're ever missing anything <laughs> because she does her best, but sometimes it doesn't always work out. But I think I think 99.9% .9 of the time we got her everything in their, your kits. But if anybody does want to send my mom a birthday card, just privately message me and I will send you her address. Hi, Marianne. Okay, so that's a little bit of what's coming up next week. Uh, then we roll into 4th of July weekend, you guys, and July 1st starts celebration. And with celebration, if you're new to the Stampin' Up! Celebration block, uh, it is with every $50 or $100 purchase, you get to pick free gifts unlimited supply. If you put a $300 order in, you get six $50 free gifts, or you could pick $300 free gifts, or you could do a mixture and match, um, whatever you want. So celebration starts July 1st, and there's also a sign-up special for anybody out there that isn't a discount shopper with Stampin' Up! or a demonstrator. Same thing, more or less. It's just, um, it's just some, people, some people don't like to want to feel obligated to do classes and so they're a discount shopper and it's all the same you're still signed up with Stampin' Up! but if you don't have anybody that you're working with besides me um, and you really want to sign up to be on my team the Be Happy Stampers there's a great sign up special starting July 1st I'd love for you to join my team um, you get in your starter kit um, so celebration I can't show you the inside of this but inside of there shows this is what you get as your free gift. For, if you're a demonstrator discount shopper right now, you can buy this. It's $45. Uh, there's a, hi Carissa, there's a, an item number for it. You can put it on a demonstrator order right now. Okay, so you can buy this. If you wanna sign up, you get this. It's this awesome six ring binder and it has um, all these extra pages that you can put into it. And it's a, it's a planner is what it is. And you can start it whenever you want. There's nothing written in here. Uh, you can write whatever you want to make it um, suitable for your needs. There's little dividers. There's some stickers. So you get all that. And hi, Laura Ann. You also get these three journals. So there's three journals. And they all are different on the insides. One's got stripes, one's got dots, and one's got nothing. And then there's also a stamp set that goes with it, making plans. So if this is uh, something that you would love to have and you're not already signed up, or if you are signed up, you can already buy it. And if you're not signed up with Stampin' Up!, you can get this. And then, um, hi, Janet Rose from Warm, California. Um, you can sign up to be a bee if you want to. Hi, Cindy Miller. Hi, Becky Scott. So that is like that leads us right into July 1st, which is the celebration period, and it goes through August 31st. So we're going to put this stuff back here so I don't have it in the way. And then uh, if you missed the showcase really quick, I want to share with everybody that I did get the Texture Chic Memories and More cards done. Uh, these are hot off the press, and I'm just going to roll through these kind of fast because you might have missed the showcase video. <clears throat> this is the Memories and More class that I have coming up the first week of July. It's the 6th in person or the 7th online, and we'll be making these 15 cards together as a group, and they are awesome. You really don't even need stamps. Um, you don't need the Texture Chic stamp set, and 
honestly right here that's stamped and I'll, I'll call it the things that are stamped because the rest of the stuff is the printed card pack so all of these so far are stickers hi julie beerspot hi cheryl thomas hi penny powell um this goes like this actually um and that says thank you so that's printed on there that's a sticker everything that's on here so far are stickers or the card packs and um, Carissa and I kind of laid these all out um, probably a month ago already um, and I just needed to get them you know kind of assembled and um, in a, a format that I can share them with you so nothing here is stamped you know so far until I call it out so all of this is self-inclusive of that card pack this one says your kindness amazes me and that's printed right on there this one I did stamp that so that is a stamp that you'll need to add and then lastly is this one so 15 cards and then you have half of your um, note cards and envelopes and your card pack left that you can make more if you want to hi Carol Sanquinetti all right so just wanted to share that with you guys real quick um, the Cards by Christine schedule has been updated as well. So if you're ever looking for that, just know it's in the newsletter section of my website. Um, my website is cardsbycrispy.com. Go to the newsletters. The very first file, it says June through December class schedule. So if you're one that likes to plan ahead like me and see what's offered, you can go in there and see it's three pages. There is also a, a fourth page. I never print it. When it's a fourth page, that's it. There is the past available classes. So if you place an order for me and you don't want something that's coming up, you can check out the past classes. It's a fourth page that is on the online PDF, but not on this one. Hi, Mary. Okay. And then what we'll do too is just to show you this is the sweet bundle class. We're going to um, pull open the catalog and share with you guys what we're working with tonight. And then we'll do roll call as well. So the, the class tonight is called Sun Prints and it is in the annual catalog. You can kind of see I got all my Sun Prints stuff out here already for you guys to see. And I'll find the page here where it is. Hi, Wendy Ellison. Uh, so Sun Prints, you guys, it's really easy to find it in the because there's an index in the front of the catalog. It's called Sun Prints and you can go to page 90 to 91. So if you aren't familiar with this yet, Hi, Mary Jean. Um, you um, can find it here. This is the spread. The suites in the annual catalog usually have a bundle, paper, and something else. And the something else in this case is the embossing folder. It's called the Fern 3D embossing folder. So I believe I told <laughs> everybody last night I had this class in person. If I had to pick one suite, I think this is the suite that I love in terms of because I love this embossing folder, I love the papers, I love everything about the suite. But I was also saying that if I had to pick just one designer series paper, I would pick the Hues of Happiness designer series paper. But Sun Prints is what we're working on tonight. You guys, could you tell I picked my two favorite things for my June classes right away when the catalog kind of like went live. So this is the suite. And just to show you a little bit of the paper, this is um, a DSP sampler I did for the annual catalog. Um, so I've got the back and forth pieces so you can kind of see what we're using here. Um, the navy and the white and the gray is so awesome together. And so we use the stripe one. We use this one. People either got this one or this one. Um, these were pretty um, interchange or exchangeable or interchangeable. So you, for one card, you might have gotten this print or you might have gotten this print. It's just, I, you guys, I made 88 sets of these cards. And then I also use this print right here. This is the card I actually, that paper is what I used for my, um, my mystery card, which I should share with you, uh, cause that featured the sun prints. So that is, uh, the DSP and then the embossing folder, which we shared. And then the stamp set itself is here and it looks like that and we will be using almost all the stamps from this set. I think I pulled every one of them out and then the dies really got a little bit of a workout too. This wreath got used on one of the cards, the label got used, the foliages, um, so that's cool. In your card kit you actually got a piece of cardstock loose in it like this and the reason it was loose is because it goes for multiple cards and I have this template so everybody who got the PDF template or the PDF tutorial from me, I put a picture of this in the tutorial so you could see how you can stamp your images. If 
you're the type that likes a lot of space, you would maybe most likely stamp this and this and think you're good on your paper. But I put this template in there to show you, you have enough paper here to stamp all the things you need. And then there was one extra little piece that was in one of the kits itself. I believe I put that one just in this kit by itself. Um, so you will need to, I'm gonna go through and we're gonna do this stamping together, okay? So, so that's in your kit as well. Um, we are gonna do roll call here in a second, but before I do that, I noticed I had Kelly's card here, you guys. <laughs> so thank you to Mostites for sending this awesome card to me. She sent me some happy mail. And she had a nice little post-it note in there with the name of this twisted braid, uh, twisted braid technique, I think is what it's called. Um, and so Kelly, if you guys missed it, she did a technique Thursday featuring how to make this so that you can add it to your card as well. And so we were very happy Mo, Mo sent us this card because Kelly's like, what should I do for technique Thursday? And I'm like this. And she even used some of the new celebration paper that you can get free with a purchase. So if you guys missed that, you can catch that in the replays as well. I'm, I forgot also I have two happy mails here. You guys, I got to share this with you really quick. So this, oh my gosh, it came from Kathy King, you guys, hues of happiness. Um, I, if I don't do the happy mail in the beginning, you guys, I tend to forget about it. So look at this. Um, so it's like a little pocket card and then these flip right in there. She's got the, the flowers set up perfectly that they only are popped up at the top and they slide right over the top of this. I love it, Kathy, using some of the new Starry Night paper. And then this one came from Ann Bellinger. Oh my gosh, Ann, I got this today. I don't know if I told you that, but you're, I think you're watching. I got your um, payment for the Summer Creative Escape. Thank you. Oh, it's like so exciting. I have, um, this is that new swimsuit set in the annual catalog and the Paradise Palms. And she used some of the, um, the paper from the Waves. And it just was such a pretty card. And so, and it says, hope it's your best day ever. And the bathing suits. I'm so excited. I don't have many samples with the bathing suits. So very pretty cards to Anne and Kathy. Love it. I love sharing those with you guys. <clears throat> okay. Then just a reminder too, so I don't forget you guys, when it comes time later tonight, I do have these three cards to tell you winners and also I have the winner drawn for the Nature's Prince Half Off Bundle. And you guys, I have a list of names. 14 people put in orders and um, on free shipping day. And they were over $75 each. So that's how you got in on this drawing. $75 order on free shipping day. And so I'm going to do a random number generator to give away the Trees for Sale stamp set, which is in the new holiday catalog. So just a reminder. I don't want to forget to do that. You guys help keep me, keep me going on that. I'll also do the door prize drawing for the class. So, all right. Oh, here's Mo's little note. So it's called the Twisted Ribbon Technique from a Dawn Hate. Uh, she found it on YouTube. So thank you. Awesome. Okay, you guys. <laughs> this is not my biggest class to date, but it, it very well could have been. Hi, Barbara Godby. 88 card kits were made and I could have easily made another 12 and they would be gone by now. I am sure if I would advertise I had 12 more, they would be gone. Um, you're not late, Barb. We're just getting started. All good. I had 88 for the fun folds and I also had 88 for, I think, New Horizons. And so this is tied for third uh, with top classes, you guys, but I would take it as this probably would have been my top class. Um, 69 packages got mailed out. You guys, Last week, um, UPS gave us a big hiccup. Hi, Gwen Petrasek. They usually arrive at one. Uh, they showed up at five last Friday and I was waiting for some brush strokes. Navy paper. No, Cheryl Stewart. The texture chic memory and more is not full. All of my July classes are not full. Okay. So you guys can sign up for anything now for July. Um, June is pretty much buttoned up. I may or may not have one left from the June monthly class. Um, I'm waiting to have the class on Saturday in case somebody calls me and says, Hey, can I come to class on Saturday? And I'm like, yeah. So hi, Teresa. So, so June is pretty much buttoned up unless you hear otherwise from me, except for the paper pumpkin. I do have, um, the June paper pumpkins available. So, but yeah, all no holds barred for July. You guys send me any notes that you want to sign up for classes. So, um, so UPS showed up at five and I had to cut some brush strokes paper for one of the cards. And then we had to get those packages all ready for the mail while my brother was here working for the on the DSP sampler. It was a hot mess, you guys, but we got it all and made it. The thing is that UP, um, UPS, USPS was closed by the time 
that we were done. And all those packages went out Saturday morning. I got them to the post office at 8 a.m. And then we had no mail on Monday. So I know Mary Lemke, you're waiting for yours. So everything got kind of hosed up a day and then a day because of the shipping. So I think most of you guys have gotten your kits, but be patient with the mail and me not mailing them till Saturday. That might make a difference for you guys. So, but I'm going to run through the names, you guys. Call out if you're here. Let me know. Um, so Doris Monson, Julie Bierschbach is on the list, but she's actually switched to in-person tomorrow. So she will actually be here tomorrow afternoon, but I, I didn't change her name on my list. So <laughs> hi, Julie. <laughs> Sandy Wicklander, Faye Godby, Jean Terwilliger, Barbara Barco, uh, Jody Storman, Angela Knutson, Sherry Stewart, Karen Cotton, Carol Lee Crabb, Deb Ryan, Sherry Martin, Deanna Stell, uh, Shirley Malarkey, Feline Mays, Mary Lemke, Joanne McDonald, um, Joanne's first class, by the way. Woohoo, welcome, Joanne. Um, Patsy Hudson, her second class, I believe. Amy Ponce, Jeannie Parker, Gwen Petroshek, Cindy Bowie. Uh, Cindy's normally an in person, but she uh, placed an on online order and picked this as her free class. Kathy King, Christina Bernards, Penny Powell, Laura Sullivan, Francis Rodriguez, uh, Robin Stender. Francis, I don't think this is your first class. I think it might be your second, if I'm not mistaken. I feel like you've done one before. <laughs> uh, Francis is part of my In Color Club, though. Robin Stender, Chris Niebaum, Stacey Burns, Karen Wettstein, Millie Kindle, um, Carmen Melendez, Barbara Moynan, Patsy Roberts, Beverly Smith, Julie Satterley, Becky Gandolfo, Carla Lake, D. Camelotto, Deb Norman, Hildenel Vilches, Latokia Trigg, Vicki Rodriguez. Now, this is Vicki's first class, so welcome, Vicki. Um, I hope you enjoy it and have fun with Frances. I know she'll be watching with you. <laughs> um, Mary Carls, Ellen Brover, Cheryl Thomas, Lynette Mooney. It's one of her first classes as well. Cindy Runtree, Jean Maxwell, Karen Stagg, Mo Stites, Helen Chase, Linda Rios, Barbara Godby, Kate Reynolds. I think this is Kate's first class. Um, Sherry Hughes, one of Sherry's first classes as well. Lila Erickson, Elaine Rebeck, Paula Bringman, her first class. Linda Hunt, Julie Horky, Julie's first class. Linda Hall, Ruth Nicholson, Linda Hodge, Lynn Beasley, Margie Slagle, and Terry Costin. Holy Moses, we made it through a list of 69 people, you guys. So, woohoo. And then on top of it, I had, um, I think I had 12 here last night and I have eight, nine for tomorrow. So tomorrow's not Friday. I have nine for Saturday. So Julie's not coming tomorrow. Julie's coming on Saturday. <laughs> I think I might've thought today was Friday for a moment. So wow, you guys, like, this is amazing. I think you are loving the sun prints as much as I am. So that was quite the list. And I have 29 people. I believe it's 29 people placed orders to get this class for free. I'll do a drawing for those 29 people. Also, on top of it, this is my promotional class, you guys. I had the most ever, and it might be because it was new, the catalog just launched. Um, I had a bunch of people who took advantage of the promotion, meaning that they bought the bundle or the suite by the date listed, which I believe was June 16th or 17th. It had to be by last Thursday or Friday. If you bought the bundle as your RSVP for, for class, you got a half a pack of the paper. So in person, I had Gail Kane and um, Joyce Korianek do that, as well as um, Annette Rollin and also Online, we had Mary Lemke, Joanne McDonald, Penny Powell, Robin Stender, Millie Kindle, Beverly Smith, Julie Satterley, Becky Gandolfo, all by the bundle. So thank you for taking advantage of that promotion. They got a half a pack of the of the designer series paper. Also, Lynette Mooney, her name is circled here too. And Vicky Rodriguez. Oh man, I stopped at Vicky, Vicky Gandol or Becky Gandolfo, and it was Vicky and Lynette as well. So um, Margie Slagle as well, too. There were so many people that took advantage of that special. So thank you for liking the classes that I pick and the products that I choose to feature for classes. You guys are awesome. Um, so, okay. Whew. 
are we ready for class now? <laughs> I kind of started like we were gonna do class and then I kind of like retreated back to doing other things that I normally get done. So, all right, for those that are new and others might chime in here, the, the main thing is for you to have fun, okay? Do not feel overwhelmed. Do not feel like you have to keep up with me. Just know that the replay is always available for you to watch either on Facebook in my, my page in the video section or I also post these videos to YouTube. And I've been hearing people have been finding me on YouTube and then come to Facebook to watch as well. So just know, um, hi Debbie and Julie, um, just know that there's no pressure to have to keep up with me. People have often given me feedback that I work kind of fast in my videos, but I do that because I like to keep the class within two hours. And knowing that you guys can go back and watch the replay and start and stop me and pause me and shut me up whenever you want. If I'm talking too much, <laughs> you can always turn me off. Uh, so um, just know that I've also made these cards. I've also done them in class a bunch. I can do them in my sleep probably, and this is your first time doing them. So what a lot of people tell me is they like to watch it, and then they'll go back and make the cards later once they've watched it. So Cindy's first time watching. Woohoo! Enjoy the show. <laughs> All right, my goal is for you guys to have fun, relax, and enjoy the nice um, cards. <laughs> Hi, Jamie Shipment. Um, yes, Jamie, the, the paper, everything's beautiful. I always put this sweet bundle class, the online PDF tutorial, in my online, I should say, I put the PDF tutorial in my online store. I usually do it within, I do it by Saturday. Uh, I don't always get to it Thursday night or Friday, but I always have it by Saturday. So in case you wanna buy the PDF tutorial, you can. Um, it's pretty cheap, it's like 11 bucks if you pay with credit card or a cash check option is 10. Or if you place a minimum, I think I have in their $20 order with me, uh, you could get the PDF for free. So those are always uh, always options too, in case you didn't get the card class with me. Um, I can't believe it. I ran out of these cards, these this class last week, Sunday. Margie was the last one to get a set. So woohoo. Okay, let's flip this down, you guys. Um, so these are the four cards we're going to be making tonight. They are so pretty. I could not stop. <laughs> I could have sat there for hours and made more cards, you guys. But I'm like, nope, four is what I'm doing. And this one, you guys, I even put three different ribbons on here. Hi, Mary Ann Robbins. Oh, hi, Lisa. Uh, so pretty. So this is my favorite. There, this is the first one I made. Um, I love it. I, I'm going to do that one last. I always save my favorite for last. And not that I don't like the other ones, but I love that one. I really like that one and that one and this one too. So we're going to start with this one though. And um, I'll grab that kit. And so just for those that are new and you're uncertain about what you get with me with my card kits, you get everything except for stamped images and adhesive. So hi, Becky Gandolfo. You get the paper, you get the specialty paper, everything die cut. You get pieces of paper um, embellished or I should say embossed, you get what you need, except for I don't stamp anything ahead for you. It's against Stampin' Up! policy, and I don't provide adhesive. You provide the adhesive. So in your card kit, though, from me, you will get this piece of um, this piece of paper, I believe, was with this kit, and then you also will get um, this mat. It's just like a quarter sheet of paper um, that that's it like we're gonna stamp all of this right away to show you how it stamps um, and then you will use your dies to cut it out so when i do a sweet bundle class or ink paper scissors i generally give you cardstock to stamp your own images and then die cut um like when it and if it's a very specific focal image i don't um die cut that and give you a piece of paper but um <laughs> bows as needed yes exactly Angela I even make all your bows you guys if um you need bows for a card so uh the sky's the limit so we're gonna grab a piece of paper here and put that down and two ink three ink colors tonight you guys it's basically night of navy gray granite and then basic white hi Donna Hale so we're gonna start with night of navy actually over here and we're gonna take this stamp with the foliage on it and we're gonna grab our piece of white paper. And you know what? I probably don't even need that because I'm not going off the edge at the moment. So stamps, um, if you're using the Night of Navy, it, if it's a foam pad, you don't need to squish very hard. Um, if it's your fabric pad, you might need to. Um, you do wanna make sure you have your uh, ink pads really inked up so you get nice images. And you have to be conservative with this, you guys. You cannot be stamping this over here to fit all this in here. What you need to do is 
like the edge of your stamp could just hit the edge of the paper and you will be fine. And we're gonna make sure we practice our marinating. Uh, marinating is the act of letting your ink soak into your paper so that you get a nice, crisp, clean image. And then you're also going to stamp this one twice because it is on two cards, this card and then that card. I'm You're not seeing them, but that card and that card. Now this needs to fit up here as well. So you just wanna make sure that you're snug up in the top left corner. Yes, Jamie, I the old host code that I had um, out that started with a B or a J, it's still open, but I'm closing that one off either tonight or tomorrow, and I created a new workshop, and the new workshop's host code is here. It's also on my website. You can copy and paste the exact link into you um, from my website and put it into your stamp you know and just copy that into your internet browser and that works um did you send pdf written in directions um connie davison um anybody who signs up for my classes that pays for them or gets them free with an order gets them free from me and otherwise those that don't they have the ability to buy my pdf tutorials in my online store and this class will be in there by saturday at the latest so um I did send it out to everybody, but Connie, I don't think you were on my class list. Um, but all 88 people, um, all the 69 that got the mail, they were emailed, I believe I did it late on Monday night. And in person, I always wait until after the last in-person class and I send them all out together. So, um, okay, so that's it for this guy for right now. And then the next one I did is this ferny looking thing here. Hi, Sherry Martin. And this guy's gonna go over here again. I kind of use the edge of my stamp as a guide that I don't want to get too close, but be far enough away. So that's, I think, one of those. And then we need the flower. Flower. Can go down at the bottom, and I would do that one next. Did you get your hair cut? No, Becky, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. It's all just really um in a ball up there. It, it still goes down to the middle of my back. I just feel like every day I lose more hair. <laughs> it's a part of life I've learned to um, accept. <laughs> so it gets thinner and thinner. So less and less looking. So the other thing, um, we need one little flower. It's just the head of the flower and it's for this card. So we're gonna do that in a second here, but I wanna do this one next, which is in the gray granite. And so it's upside down and you're gonna sneak him right next to that. And then we have our flower and you just need the head. So we're gonna put it right there, okay? That's it for this piece, you guys. You also have this little piece though. And with that one, you don't care about the bottom of the stem, it gets hidden. So that's why it's a smaller piece than what you think you need. Um, it's going to get stamped on here and don't worry about the bottom. Um, Cindy Runtree, you're correct. I am not frozen either. Jamie Tafoya is saying not frozen. I'm not sure if somebody said they were frozen, but I am not frozen. Um, so there's that, you guys. <clears throat> so the rest of these are sentiments that we're gonna need and that little splotchy thing. And this is ultimately what you're looking for for stamping. Now what you're gonna do for you guys at home is I would personally either, you're gonna fussy cut them if you don't have the dies, but if you have the dies, what I would do is I would take your scissors and cut these into individual pieces. And then you will be able to put them on your, your embossing cutting machine. Uh, you can do these two. These will need a second pass. And then you, if you try to cut these on your machine while they're all connected like this, it's gonna be a hot mess. I would definitely do a one pass with these four and then do another pass with these three. And then these are what you're gonna need um, for all of your cards. By the magic of TV, all of mine are done for me and they are in my card kits already. So I am all done with that. But for those doing the class with me, if you didn't do that ahead, um, you might do that while you're listening to me or you might just wait. So that's, that's that step of the process, okay? All right, so let's move these back out of the way and we're gonna go on to that, this card. So when you guys get a kit from me, it should have everything in it. Should is the key word. I mentioned that my mom tries. <laughs> she tries. We all try, we really do. We try, we don't do it. And nothing is intentional if we forget something. So you have your card base and it's Knight of Navy 
eight and a half by five and a half, score it at four and a quarter. And then what you do is turn it over and you're gonna burnish it. So when you get your card kit from me, it comes in a, a white envelope or a vanilla envelope. We have not burnished your card, so you will need to go back and burnish. You do wanna pay attention because this is a horizontal, I feel like there's glue right there catching. Um, this is a horizontal card. I, I catch people a lot because I do a lot of vertical cards. So I catch people in class. I'm like, turn your paper. <laughs> All right. So hi, Marsha Kulibert. Then you have two mats in your card kit, four by five and a quarter. One's for your inside and one's for your top mat. Okay. So we'll set these like that. Your piece of designer paper is a five and a sixteenth by three. And remember, I mentioned you have either this print or you have a different gray print that is very similar, but they both look very nice with this card, okay? Sometimes too, depending on how my trimmer cuts things, sometimes it could leave a little hair on the side. If that happens to you, all you have to do is take your scissors and trim it. It generally doesn't happen, but it can, um, just how it catches it. This is that brush strokes paper, you guys. Oh, so pretty. Okay, it comes in three different colors, and this is what I was waiting from the UPS guy to bring. I had seven packs of it for all my classes that I have coming up that I need it for, and he did not bring it till five o'clock. Let me just show you it. There's a specialty page here um, in there. I can show you the other colors. It comes in, okay. It comes in this pink blushing bride, a soft succulent and night of navy. So you get three 12 by 12 sheets and it's got that brush stroke print to it and kind of a glisteny look as well. So it's cool. So that went really great with this, with the navy. You should have a piece of gray granite shimmer ribbon about six inches. You will eventually have that flower head and then that spriggy thing, the wheat flower thing. This label is from the He's the Man die set. So I didn't want to use the same die label. The, the label that comes in the set looks like this, but that would have been boring if we would have used that four times. <clears throat> so I brought in a different label from He's the Man. This die comes from a set called Delicate Edges. It's in the annual catalog. I, I, I helped some people last night find some things that they didn't know they needed <laughs> in class. It's right here <clears throat> on page 170. They're called Delicate Edges, and it's that top one. Super cool. This leaf one, I cannot wait to use that on something. There's a seaweedy looking one and then a flowery looking one. So pretty. That's where this comes from. You will need to um, pun like pop out anything. Anna does the die cutting. I tell her she does not need to do poking. If stuff ends up falling out, fine, but I don't tell her to go and sit and poke. You guys, I tell everybody they can poke their own pokey pokes out, okay? So you might need to do that on yours to get some of that out. And then there's also a little rose gold, let's see if this shows better, a rose gold um, little foliage that's from the dies here. This has three of them that are like this, so that was cool. And you will also have your champagne rhinestones. You'll have a big one and two small ones in your kit. Okay, so that's what's in this one. So first things first, I want to Stella this, bottom ridge of this. And I do it when it's not on the card so that if I hit the other area, it's on my scrap paper instead. So this little edge looks super cool if you add a little bit of glitz to it. Um, very, very cool. So this is Stella, and I'm even gonna do a little bit right on that top ridge of the blue because you do see that. Okay, Stella, it's called Winka Stella. We sell it, Stampin' Up sells it. Um, you can add it to your order if you wanna you know, place an order. It's part of their, their lineup. It adds glitter to the card. and. It's hard to see it in a camera, but it, it adds a little bit of gl a little glitz. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to add glue. So if I say adhesive glue, you could use tape runner, you could use liquid glue, however you wanna do it. I am a liquid glue girl, so I will generally use liquid glue. I do not generally ever pull out tape like this. I have a hard time with it. It never 
works good for me. <laughs> and it works even worse for my mom. So I don't generally use it. Um, so we're gonna glue this on the back side. Did you guys catch that? Um, this is the back side. We're gluing this over the top of the edge. You have enough edge there to put the glue on and you're just gonna line it up. Make sure you line up one side nice and flush. And if the other side is a hair too long, you can trim it off. If it's a hair too short, just center it, okay? All right, Barbara Barco, thanks for popping in for a little bit. And then mine is a hair long, so I'm just gonna trim that off. All right, so I do, I left a little blue border on the bottom there. Next thing I'm gonna do is put my shimmer ribbon. I love this gray ground. I'm so happy they carried this over. Um, yes, Cindy um, and Doris, these dyes are awesome. The, I can't wait to even, the wreath is so cool. Okay, the gray granite shimmer ribbon carried over um, from last year, which is perfect because it goes so great with this suite. So I'm putting my tear and tape on the back. And then what I like to do is hold the card in front of me and I don't care. I know the tape is back there, so I don't care about the back at the moment. What I care about is the front. And I want to make sure that my gray granite shimmer ribbon hits right below, or right where my DSP ends. And so once I have it there, I just take my fingers and I flip the tails over, just like that. Now I know it's straight, okay? Then what I like to do is add another couple pieces of tear and tape onto the back. I call this my tear and tape sandwich. And I noticed here that it stuck to my finger and the paper came off early. So now this, we're gonna add glue. So you can take those tear and tapes off, the backings, and then we're gonna put some extra glue on the back. And then this gets adhered to the gray granite mat. So just like that. All right, I did not, did you notice? I did not put any glue on that bottom edge. It is really hard to glue that because it's so fine, little details. So don't even try to. Knowing that that's glued to the back of the designer paper, you're good to go. And then this piece will go right on the top here. So that navy brings out the navy here. And so we can take some adhesive and put that on the back of our gray granite, making sure your opening is at the bottom. It's always good to kind of test that in case it accidentally got upside down on you. And then that's gonna go here, like that. Now, this is the brush stroke. We're bringing in a little bit more blue. I have it right above the gray granite shimmer ribbon. Um, hi, Pat Detlefson. Um, people were asking last night about using what kind of glue. It's not like vellum. Where vellum, you see the glue. With this, you don't see the glue. So I am just using a little bit of liquid glue and I'm gonna glue it flat. I'm centering it left to right and I have it slightly overlapping that shimmer ribbon, just like that. Okay, all right. So we talked about these two die cut pieces. I, hi Sandy Zidoon, hi Rosemary. Um, You've already potentially die cut yours out. I did too earlier by the magic of TV, mine were done. I'm taking and cutting off, once I ran it through the die, now I'm cutting off those extra little bits of that flower. So those are ready to go. So you have these three pieces and we'll use them in a moment. We do need to do some stamping. Um, Mary, I'm not frozen. So if you're frozen, it might be on your end because I am not frozen. All right. So we have some stamping to do here. So we need to stamp an inside. On the inside, I have that gray leafy thing. So we'll grab this sheet back here. And, oh, I'm glad it's good for you now. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put our little bit of this gray leafy thing here. I don't always keep the entire stamp on the page. If I would have put that all on the page, it might have been in too far. So like if I do that, I feel like it's out too far. By cutting some of it off of the page, it kind of brings it into the corner for me. So I'm gonna do that. And then there are some nice little splotchies. It's always great to have little background texture things that you can stamp. But just know if you do this at first strength, which that is, it's super dark. 
If you do it at second strength, it's probably like spot on. If you do it at third strength, it's even less. So your call, what you wanna do, I feel like in this case, I might go for third. So what I'm gonna do is go one, two, three. Stamp it again, one, two. I'm gonna turn my stamp this time so it doesn't look so uniform. And so that's third strength. And all it did is put a little bit of extra texture on the back. And then what we can do is grab our Knight of Navy pad. And you can pick heartfelt thanks fits on here, a heartfelt thank you, or you're on my mind fits in there. So we're using the heartfelt thanks on a different one. So we'll use you're on my mind for this one. And I feel like the it, it looks slightly <laughs> at a slant. So we have a little forgiveness with this one. And when I have white behind me, it's really hard to see the outline. So I generally try not to have white behind. So the you're on is what I was trying to get straight. And then my mind goes at a slant, which kind of looks okay because that's where our flower is going to go. Flower. All right. Now, this white can get glued on the inside. And then I'm gonna show you how I put this conglomerate of stuff together. All right, so grab our card. That goes in here. Now, if you're a double matter, you could definitely do gray granite and then white, and that would be cool. So how do we do this? Hi, Wendy Kruger. So, this is going to get popped up and put in the middle. So what I'm going to do is prep it with some, oh man, at the end of this. <laughs> we are not going to not use these. We're going <laughs> to, this is when you guys get to the end of your dimensional sheet. You just cut these little bits and parts up or you can use the tracks. I, I like these side ones um, for long skinny uh, dimensionals. So We'll get these all prepped for us. All right. I use my glue scissors for that. Hi, Kay Weir. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some dimensionals on the back of our label. Because I cut these a little small, I'm going to use six. But because there's some foliage on the right-hand side here, I'm not going to take off these two right ones at the moment. I'm only going to take off... Oh, I just said that backwards. Hang on. I'm going to not take off the right ones there and I'm going to take off the two left ones so that these aren't going to stick okay so when we put this down it secures the label to our card but now I have the ability to tuck things in here so you guys on your you don't have to worry about this that actually part of that gets cut off so I'm actually going to take my scissors and cut some of this off right there that's why that piece of paper was a little shorter and then I'm going to put a dimensional at the top here. And I'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue at the bottom. So I generally do popping up on things at the top and then gluing flat at the bottom. And now I can take this, lift it up, and eyeball exactly where I think that this should go. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to play around with it till I like it. So something like that. All right, so that's stuck. That's glued. And now what I can do is put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of this guy. Had I put taken those dimensionals off, I would have been ripping it up to get that glue down. And then this one. Oh, they're opposite. I didn't know that. Okay, look at this, you guys. I didn't catch that. I they're they're the same, but they're different. This one's got the two on that side, and that one's got or the three, and that one's got the three here. They're like flip floppied. Okay, I didn't catch that till right now. I thought that all three of those dies were the same, but they're actually facing different ways. It's still gonna look fine. So I'm gonna put this one like that. And then our flower, flower, will get a dimensional. And I'm gonna put that dimensional actually right on the, here versus putting it on the flower. So I don't have to guess, because I know the flower needs to stick right about there. And I'm gonna find the little stem is right there and I'm gonna put that right at the bottom here. Okay, so then you guys will have some diamonds, some champagne rhinestones, and you'll have a big one 
And hi, Ethel King. Almost one for Zaina. Yes, it's always your late night when I'm going live. So you got a bigger one that will go on that one. And then, oh, I've got a loose one right here. Let's use him up. And you've got two small ones. And I've got them off <laughs> stuck to the side there. So let's grab there. So we already added our Stella with, but if you wanted to Stella more, you could always Stella like the edge here, the, the gray granite edge. Um, if you Stella in your flower, you have to be careful because some of that blue ink might bleed. Sometimes that happens if you put rubbing alcohol in your pens. So I'll just do a little bit. All right, you guys. We've got our first beautiful card done. Would this not make a beautiful wedding card? Um, a congratulations card, a birthday card. Oh, so pretty, so pretty. I, I love it. So I'm gonna be really, hi Judy Emma. I'm gonna be really sad when we're done with making these <laughs> four cards, but I get to do it again on Saturday with my group on Saturday. So, all right, one card done. Woohoo! okay. So the next one, where do I wanna set it? Right here maybe. The next card, you guys, we rock and roll and we get right to it. <laughs> All right, the next card has a white base, a thick white base. And generally when I have white bases, I should say almost all the time when I have white bases, unless it's let's just stamp, I stamp directly on the thick white cardstock. My bases are either, if they're white or vanilla, they're always thick. I don't use the thin. It just makes the card bulkier and a little more beefier, right? <laughs> a little more, like there's a little more meat to it. So in this one, this is the one you're going to get three ribbons. You have three ribbons in this kit, you guys. So, and I got to show you how they work because we were conservative. If you guys know me, I am a little bit conservative with ribbon. Oh, Mary made hers an anniversary card. Are you giving that to my mom for her anniversary? <laughs> that would be awesome if you did. Uh, hi, Joanna. <laughs> my mom and dad's wedding anniversary uh, 50 years is July 1st. So that is coming up, not this weekend, but next weekend. Okay, so you guys, in your kit, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. So let's see what we have. You have a thick white base, which we just talked about. And what you'll want to do is burnish that. Yes, Linda Grady, very elegant looking. All of these cards are so elegant. This is another horizontal card. So we're going to keep the card horizontal. You will have in your kit this piece of the designer paper. It's the blue with the dots. And you'll have a piece of gray granite. And it is embossed with the painted texture embossing folder. And the base or the mat here is Knight of Navy. Right? So these two will go on these. Now, I have a disclaimer, you guys. Um, so this is from the designer takes. I... I don't know why I did it with painted texture, but you guys all got yours embossed with the fern embossing folder, um, which is perfect because um, this one's with the fern embossing folder. Um, I don't, and it's hard to see it, but it is the fern embossing folder. So you guys all have the fern. I don't know how I ended up with a painted texture on like two of my cards. I think I accidentally embossed them incorrectly, but regardless, it's gonna look great with mine with the painted texture or the fern. They're very universal. Um, you guys have five inches of white ribbon, and I actually only gave myself four because um, it's very doable with four. You have five inches of the Starry Night New In Color ribbon. I gave myself four. <laughs> you have five inches of the metallic mesh, which looks like that. You'll use that in a bit. And then you have two of these. On my card here, it shows three, but that's because the tall, skinny one gets cut into two sections, okay? So we'll make that into two. Now you will have from your die cutting and stamping early, yeah, 50 years, can you imagine being 50 years? I don't think I'll ever even make 10 <laughs> at the rate I'm going, because um, uh, I have to be married to even start, right? <laughs> so you guys will have um, this done. We talked about this earlier, we stamped that earlier, um, but you have a label, and this is in gray granite. And so we're going to stamp our Knight of Navy on here. And that's what the one we made, a heartfelt thank you. Um, you also, in this one, is you'll have three more um, gems that you will be putting on your card. So we'll see those again in a moment. Um, very little stamping on this one, you guys. So your card should look very similar. Um, you've already stamped that. So if you don't have this, 
any other foliage thing would look nice. Uh, we're going to stamp that big thing in the middle here, though. So let's maybe... We're done with that. We'll set it there. We need our navy ink. And we need this big guy right here. Oh, thanks, everybody. <laughs> yes, Ada, that does usually help to, <laughs> to be married to start having an anniversary, right? <laughs> oh, I mean... <laughs> I mean, I'm going on like four and a half years of dating Tyler, but I wouldn't say that. No, well, that's still an anniversary. <laughs> so I've known him for 10 years. I met him in 2008, so I've known him for 14 years. So that's getting to be a long time. Okay, so there's that. And then that's, well, we leave that because we're not done with that stamp. Okay, with stamping on the gray granite, though, you guys, you have to be very, very um, careful. I'm a little careful, but stamp. It's not like stamping on white paper where you can see it. Oh, me, my. This will be a sympathy card. This would be a very pretty sympathy card. All these cards would be pretty for all different occasions. When you stamp on this, oh, Deb, you and Ed are at 49 in July. Awesome. You got them married a year after my parents. Um, you want to give it time to really marinate on here. And if you go really fast, it might not soak in. And because it's gray. You really want the ink to soak in so that you can see it. Um, the gray is darker than white paper. That's what my point is, so that you can see it. So we're just going to give this a second. Hi, Linda Kester. All right. There we go. I'm good with it. So that's where the thank you got used. And now we can get assembly happy here. So what do we do first? A two for tonight. Yay! Yup, you guys. I snuck that in. I told Kelly when she was here. Hi, Brenda from Ontario. I told Kelly to tell you guys that I was going to be live with the Texture Chic and what's coming up with the Summer Creative Escape. And so I was bound and determined to get that live in. And I snuck it in right before class. Yay! Zane, I'm happy single after 29 years being with someone so happy I didn't marry him. Lucky escape, huh? You know, things happen for a reason. I will have to say that. My mom has taught me that everything happens for a reason. You might not know why during the time that you're going through it, and you might never know why, but um, I always have to believe it. it. Everything happens for a reason. So, okay, that was really easy, you guys, right? We just glued the gray and the designer paper on. Now comes this label. That's where it starts to get a little tricky, and I bamboozled people a bunch last night. I really got people on this. So flip it over, and you're going to put your tear and tape down first. Move the mesh off to the side. You don't need it, but you guys have five inches. I only gave myself four. I'm going to make it work in four. So fold your ribbon in half, and you're going to cut it so you have two pieces. Boom. Okay, one and two. Same with this one. Cut it in half. <laughs> My mom is a smart lady, yes. <laughs> Hi, Sandy Wicklander. All right, two pieces. All right, we're making this work. You guys have two and a half. I only have two, I think. So what you have to do, take your tear and tape off, and you have to put the blue on first. And I'm only using a little tail, <laughs> just a little bit, like a quarter inch or so is sticking, maybe like three eighths but center it as best as you can. So this is the back. And now what we have to do is we have to bring this ribbon through the hole, okay? So grab your pick tool or your fingers, whatever you wanna use, and bring it up. So you could also do this and like feed it up like that way, okay? So we've got our blue ribbon on first. Now what you're gonna do is attach two things. Like you can attach this or sometimes it's easier to move the white ribbon or the blue ribbon out of the way and bring this white ribbon up right away. So once that's through there, then you're going to catch, I don't want the blue, I wanna pull the white. You're gonna catch the white ribbon on your tear and tape. So that makes it so that the blue is in front of the white. I had the, I was telling people in class last night when I originally made this card, I had just the white ribbon and it looked just too white and I would have left it except for I remembered we have this really pretty starry night little shimmer ribbon and it looked so good right in the middle of the white that it kind of cut the white up and it just it added more color to the card 
So that's why you guys have so much ribbon on here. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't be mean, but believe, I mean, you know, all that matters is that you're happy now, right? <laughs> you live and you learn. Okay, so that's that, right? So to be safe, I would just stick another little piece of washi, not washi tape, tear and tape over the top of that. And then what we're gonna do is pop this up with dimensionals and the ribbon is so pretty. I love this white frayed ribbon too. It's what we're using in the Texture Chic Memories and More class. We used it in the Stampa stack actually too for Artfully Composed. It's so versatile. All right, like the look with the star. Yeah, it was too blah without having that starry night. So it definitely was a bonus to have something that worked. <laughs> All right, let's get rid of these little guys. And now we've got this ready. So what we have to do is center this on our mat here. So left to right, top to bottom, right about there. All right. Hi, Karen Carste. And hi, Faye Godby. So now we can put our tear and tape sandwich on the back here. And that's going to, this, this card uses a lot of tear and tape, you guys. So again, from the front though, I like to make sure I'm straight and then I flip my tail. Hi, Sue Thomas from Ohio. And then flip my tail. But now the blue ones aren't down. So this is why I said it uses a lot of tear and tape. So now you got to put another piece here. You could use glue dots too if you wanted. Hi, Penny Powell from Florida. Hi, Carla Lake. All right. So now we got this prepped here. And then now I'm from the front. I want to make sure that I get that nice and straight. And then now I've got my tear and tape back there. And so do you see what I did is I just saved ribbon. I did not put any ribbon between here and here, right? So I saved. Now this white ribbon only comes five yards on a roll because it's a really different type of, it's usually 10 yards on a roll. But because it was only five, I gave everybody five inches and now you don't have to waste anything behind there. And it helped my ribbon go a little bit further. I do like to make sure that that ribbon also has some extra um, tape on the top of it. And now we've, we're done with that part of it. <laughs> so we can get this onto our card base. So I'm gonna put some more liquid glue everywhere else. The tear and tape will help it stick there. Now this is where you gotta pay attention. If you want it like mine, you put the designer paper on the bottom, but I know Annette last night put hers at the top, which either way, it definitely works. Thanks for sharing, Sue. I appreciate it. All right. I appreciate you guys sharing this video too to all your friends, your Facebook friends and family. So there you guys, we have our base and our first layer is done. So we have these two blushing, these rose gold pieces here. I talked about splitting them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off this one and we'll use that but this one looked weird to me because it had that like that so either you leave it or if you don't like it what you could do is trim it so find a spot where you want to trim it and it make it look more natural but now i've got three of them and that's what we need so this is the die cut from the beginning where it was on your mat we're going to use a little more tear and tape and put it right down the middle of here and hi Lori Ransom, you're going to take your mesh, fold it in half, bring the bottom together, like I just cinched it together, and now you're going to catch the tear and tape with it. It might be a little long, that's okay, we can trim it, but now you're going to like frou-frou it up. That's the word I used last night in class, like frou-frou it up, and that should stick because the tear and tape is there, but now I like to go back and... Um, hi, Gwen. Hi, Deb. We're going to put a little more tear and tape right over the top of that. Okay. And then I'm going to add some dimensionals. Hi, Cheryl. We're going to add, where are my dimensionals? Right over here. So we're going to put one at the tippy top here and then another one there. And those will have dimensionals, but then at the bottom here, I'm going to add a little liquid glue and that will be flat down there. And I think I'm actually also going to pick that off and it'll stick to the paper there and this kind of just feeds up the left side of this label 
I think something like that. Okay, now we'll trim our mesh here in a moment. So I'm gonna just leave it be how it is. And the label over here, hi Karen Stag. This will get popped up with dimensionals. So this is where I love to use some of these tracks. So let's grab the glue scissors. And what I'll do is put one right here and put one here. And I'll do the same thing that I did on the last one. I'm only gonna, did I peel those off on the last card? I'm just, <laughs> hang on, did I ever, I never took the paper off, haha. -ha. So after you, <laughs> I meant to take those papers off. <laughs> Once you got it figured out where you want it, you gotta remember to take that off. <laughs> the backings off. So I only took the bottom one off here and I left the top one because now I'm going to put this where I think I want it. And oh, my glue didn't stick. Hang on, let me put a little pressure on that. So this is going to go here. I got it kind of right underneath that that blue ribbon. And now I can kind of tuck in where I want these things and then I'll pull that off in a second. So we're going to grab our liquid glue and I know this one goes in the front and that one, and then this one, we'll put that one, we'll tuck that in there. So little liquid glue on the backs of these. That one can go there. Gotta give this a second. The glue doesn't always like to stick right away. And then this one, we're gonna put a little glue on the back of that. And then now we can lift up our label. Kinda tuck that in. Where we think we want it and then the last one little liquid glue and figure out where you want this one you want it to look like it extended in height just kind of tuck it in like that and then now that we've got the things that we want under our label we can pull that and so I like to use that technique that's a good tip for Tip Tuesday. I like to, you know, because I don't like to necessarily always put things on the back of my labels, but I want things to be exactly where I want them. So by only putting a portion of the label down, it gets it secure, and then I can slide things in where I want them. Now we have um, the ribbon here. This is kind of long for me. So I'm just going to figure out how I want to trim this. I don't like maybe at an angle like that. And then, oh, cutting it backwards doesn't work so well, like that. And then you can kind of frou-frou it up however you want to. And then you have, cut a little bit more off there. It's, it's like cutting hair, stuff is so fine. Okay, and then grab your rhinestone cowboys. And there's a little one here, so we'll use that. And you should have a sm two smalls and a big again. So let's grab that one, that. So the navy with the gray with this rose gold just was awesome. I loved it. Hi, Pamela Leahy. Thanks so much. Oh, you guys, so fun. I, like, it looks complicated and there's a, a lot going on, but I think when you dissect it piece by piece and can see how to put it together, it's not so crazy. So fun. Okay, so our heartfelt thank you, and there's some ribbon on the inside. <laughs> all right, with a little stamping. So we've got these two done, all right? <laughs> thank you, guys. All right, I think that's it for our rhinestones because the other two cards have the iridescent pearls. So let's put these in here, and then... We'll grab the pearls and let's see which one we're doing next. Okay, this can go away. And we're doing the wreath card next. So that would be this one. Yeah, they are so pretty. Okay, this is another white base, you guys. So you're not gonna have a mat for your inside. Oh, look at all the hearts, I love it, yay. Thanks, guys. <laughs> all right, so this next one also, the white base, and this one also has some gray ribbon, you guys. It's not enough to weave it back and forth. So there is a trick to the ribbon. All right, so I'll show you that. And you should have your white 
thick white base. Oh, more hearts. Yay, look at them all come in. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thanks, Ruth. Yes, these cards are so beautiful. Back to vertical, you guys. So let's make sure we stamp our inside correctly. Uh, this one, oh, I need the white embossing on this one. It's set up over on the other side of the room, so I'll have to go grab it. Um, you will have a white wreath. And this white wreath, I recommend Stella-ing it. Yay, hearts, you guys. <laughs> They're coming in. <laughs> they love it. All right, so you definitely, Stella, that's definitely going to make these by the replay. Can't wait. Maybe. <laughs> Joanne might be sick tomorrow. I won't tell your boss that I, <laughs> that you might be playing hooky. <laughs> that's what you'll have, that's, you'll have that, right? <laughs> Hi, Carol Jefferson. All right, there's Mitzi Stanley. Hi, Mitzi. Yeah, you guys. So I forgot to tell you guys this, but you might not have caught it either. In the designer paper, there is a pack that is called Pretty Prints. They're all the same font, like textures. Um, you are the boss. I love it, Joanne. <laughs> um, there's Blackberry Bliss with like rich raspberry and grape. And then you have the green hues. You have Bermuda hues and coral. All of these prints are the same patterns as the blue, and they match sun prints. So if you were like, oh, I hate navy, even though navy's super cool, um, you could have done all these cards in Blackberry Bliss. You could have done these in that Evening Evergreen. You could have done them in Coral Coral. You could have done them in the Bermuda Bay. Um, and just find if gray didn't look so good with them, you could have picked whatever complementary color with them. So, yeah, fun stuff. Okay, so we stella that, and while we're at it, we're going to Stella this blue guy, too. So let's do that. Yeah, it's so fun. Not everybody caught that right away, that those pretty prints. And those pretty prints are, like, they're, they're pretty sneaky. They gave you one each of the sheets. You didn't get two each of the sheets. You got 12 sheets in the pack, but you got four of each color. So, all right, so that's Stella. In your kit, so you'll have your wreath in your kit. This wreath got cut out with thick white. Uh, pokey pokey on it, though, so let's find that. There are going to be some areas that need a little poking. So those, those, and here, okay? Got them all out. And then in your kit, you're also going to have, this is from Forever Flourishing. Love that die set. And this is a vellum little foliage, I call it. You'll have the blue foliage. The long skinny one comes from the die set. A little silver one and a little vellum one. Let's see if I can find the vellum one. Nope, not a vellum one. I lied. The other card kit has a vellum. This just has a silver. Okay. So you have a mat that's four by five and a quarter in navy, and then you have the gray granite, slightly smaller, with the fern embossing folder. And then your piece of DSP is my classic three by four, which is awesome, because you get 12 mats out of there. And you don't need this because we have that template. Don't go real fast. I have to run and let the dog in. Ha <laughs> ha, Jeannie. Okay, Jeannie, I'm gonna buy you a moment in time because I need to go get the white embossing. Um, from my table or is over on the counter. So you guys gotta give me 30 seconds. Jeannie, you got 30 seconds and go. I'll be right back guys. I gotta get my embossing folder and heat tool. Hang on. If you guys watched me on Monday, I did Let's Just Stamp, and we used black embossing powder. Today, we're using white, and we have the heat tool here, so this is what we'll be using to heat up, and I got my clothespin handy. I need to get a drink <laughs> to tape tapes, <laughs> to take tapes. <laughs> Love the DSP. Yes, the Pretty Prince is awesome. Okay, we need a Versamark pad, so I lied, you guys. We have three ink pads plus a Versamark, so there's four. Got the embossing buddy. You guys, they have a new um, toolkit that includes, it's available July 1st. It has an embossing buddy, a reverse tweezers, a brush, and a little tray for embossing. Super cool. So we need our that, 
<laughs> go, 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 Jeannie. Yes. <laughs> go get the dog in. All right. So we got our buddy. And then I keep my powder in this Tupperware container. And we'll set that right here. Got a lot going on tonight. I always keep my clothes pin handy. So this one says best wishes and happy thoughts. And you guys want to be careful. We had people in class last night where I think the oils from your finger or if you have hand lotion on, if you touch this, your powder sticks to it. Even after we, <laughs> take a deep breath, Jeannie. Um, even after we did this embossing buddy. So the embossing buddy is a pillow, like a chalk pillow. And what you're gonna do is rub that on here. It helps release any oils that are on there. It helps to, like if there's static electricity, it kind of like makes it so the powder will only stick where the Versamark is. Yes. The embossing buddy is a must-have. It really helps. People are using dryer sheets. Like, that could help. Um, but this is a pigment pad. It's super duper inky or gooey, I should say. Gooey. It's like invisible ink. So when you ink this up, you go to your, your little label. Now, if you don't have white embossing powder, silver would be really pretty. If you don't have embossing at all, it's really going to be hard to stamp on here um, because navy is so dark. And I didn't think about that. I generally think ahead, like what happens if people don't have embossing powder? Well, you could cut yourself a white rectangle that is about the same size of this label if you don't have this label or cut a different label and use navy ink on it. And that would work. Or if you have like the light gray um, that would work. You guys saw I marinated for a very long time. And so I'm going to shut this up, move this over yonder, and then I open this up and I pour it over the top. So embossing is what me got, was what got me hook, line, and sinkered stamping. I never tap the paper. I hold it firmly with my one hand and then I tap my hand, you guys. So, you know, it's crazy, but that works. If you get any embossing, could you have used the Misty to stamp this too? Yes, absolutely, Join. You can always use the Misty or the Stamparatus to stamp anything. Um, that definitely works as well for any stamping. Um, what about the white ink? Oh, yeah, you could stamp in the white ink. We'll look and see what it looks like. Um, it's not going to be as pronounced I think as embossing in white, but let's try it. We'll get a little piece of navy ink out or paper. Oh, we can stamp it on the back of this to try it. Okay, you guys, what I'm doing is I have a little brush or I have fingernails and I like to, if there is like a onesie twosie little guy that are trying to hang out on here that they're not welcome to the party, I try to get them off. Okay, it doesn't generally happen, but just in case, there. Get out of there. Okay. And I will show you guys. So I like to shut that up, put the cover on before I accidentally blow my heat gun all over it. Wait, the cat's, oh, she hates the heat gun. Oh no, put me on, put mute me in a second, okay? Um, give me a second here. We're gonna get the gun going, Zaina, and then put me on mute so your cat doesn't get all upset. Heat tool, you guys. I'm gonna try to put it up in the air so you can see the melting in action. Here we go, Zaina. <laughs> All right, so this needs to heat up. It's like a uh, toaster meets a uh, blow dryer. It's really hot like a toaster, but it blows like a blow dryer. And I'm gonna try to set this up here. Sometimes it's hard to see in the video, but what happens is um, it melts. So they're tiny pieces of plastic pellets and the heat tool gets them warm enough where they melt onto the paper and I just follow it along as it melts. You don't want your fingers right where the paper clip is. It will burn your skin and you will blister. I've never done it, but I've gotten close. So, all right. So that's it for the heat tool. Oh man, I gotta, gotta pull it out and not knock everything to the floor. Okay, so now when you go over if you didn't have it melted appropriately you could go back and melt it more but now when you go over this it's like plastic all right so 
That can go here. We talked about white though. You guys were saying, oh, what about white? Yep, you, yep, let's try it. So this is my background and we have the white right here. Let's see what it looks like. So Jeannie used the Whisper White and it's not as bold, correct. And that's what I wanna show you guys right now. I'm going to show you what the white ink, so it depends on how juicy your white ink pad is as well. So I'm getting white ink on here. Hi, Gail. Or let's just see. So yes, white ink pad could work, but it would work and you want to dry, right? Because the, the white ink pad is more of a pigment pad, but look at the difference, right? It's there. You can read it. It works, but the embossing just makes it pop. And there is some of that chalk powder pillow on there, so you can just kind of wipe that off. Okay. So we need this on the last card, so we'll leave that right there. Let's stamp off a couple times and clean this one. So it was a good experience to show you guys the white ink pad, which was part of listed in this class because we use it for sponging later. So let's see here. This one has a flower, flower in the bottom corner. <laughs> You guys, every time I say flower, I think of Bambi. So that's why I say that. I don't know if you haven't seen Bambi before, you might not get that, but <laughs> hi, Pat. How are you doing tonight? Coming in late? Coming in late. Yes, no problem. All right, flower is grounded on the bottom like that. You guys, I didn't stamp any sentiments on the inside. That's always up to you how you guys want to stamp your sentiments. So I... <laughs> kind of like didn't think about them after I got the outsides of these cards designed and so pretty like I'm like I'm good on the insides <laughs> all right so we got a little bit of gluing to do here so we need to do these three things so let's start with this one and I gotta do one by one because I just realized that this goes on to here so this blue paper um <laughs> Bambi was a good movie. Um, this blue is different pattern. It's not different pattern. It's different shading. Some of you guys got more of the Pacific Point in it. Some got more dark navy. Some got in the middle. So just so you know that, it was all from the same sheet of paper. Then this goes on to here. You guys were worried that I was stamping on my navy paper, weren't you? So I noticed I've got some snaggle tooths that I'm gonna trim off right there. And then this goes on here. No rhyme or reason top or bottom with this, just center it nice top to bottom, left to right. And then our frame, or our, our wreath, there's one little hooky thing on here. It's like it's circular except for right here. <laughs> and so I made that the bottom. So um, gluing this, uh, be very cautious because you don't need to glue the whole thing, but you don't want to, I go for the bigger areas is what I do. So leaf, 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 go for this. I don't do the whole thing. I kind of trace my glue bottle around until I get it all. Lou Ann, Laura Ann, can someone tell me why I have such difficulty with my intricate dies? I can't, I either can't get them to cut clearly or if I run them through for four or five times, then I can't get more of the paper out of the dies. Um, so it depends on, I don't know like what kind of a cutting machine you have. That would be my first question. What kind of plates you have? Um, sometimes they get warped or they're bad too. Intricate dies need a nice tight cushion, I guess you'd say, um, so that it, because they're so fine, and especially if you're cutting thicker paper, like specialty paper that has glimmer on it, or if you're cutting something that is more thick, it's hard to get that detail to cut. So there's a lot of unknowns, but everybody can kind of chime in if they want to about what ideas for getting them to cut better. Sometimes people add shims, like a thinner piece of paper um, or um, a mat to it to help. Crap, I forgot today was card day. Replay it is. Hi, Stacy Burns. Oh, wax paper. Yes, Deb Norman said, I do too. I also use wax paper sometimes um, on more intricate dies to help them get out. But I don't know if you're having a problem even with the cutting. That might not 
so intricate dies they're they're touchy um i had um sometimes they just don't even work with this type of paper i think um denise was over a few weeks ago and she was trying to cut that a really really even more detailed than this the, um it was a heart from a lovely of the the valentine's day set from last year and she was trying to cut it out of acetate and it would not cut acetate. But if you put it in with regular cardstock, it worked just fine. Okay, you guys, ribbon here. Um, Glory Ransom says to put your framelits at a diagonal into the machine and that might help. The other thing too is under your machine, the gears are on the outside, right? Not the middle. So I've often heard that you put the um, closer to the gears or where the, like, the pressure is on the machine. So if this is your machine like this, like, and this is where it cuts it in the middle, putting it at the, at the top and the bottom. Okay, so you gotta take this ribbon and you gotta cut it in half, okay? Promise you, it's gonna be enough. So take your tear and tape off and you're going to need to prep another two pieces of tear and tape to have them handy for in a second. Robin says try using a bounce sheet. Okay, a dryer sheet too. That has always also been what people do. So you're gonna, again, from the front, I like to watch it. I know the tape is back there. I catch the end and I'm putting this at a slight angle, and then I loop it back, catch that tear and tape, and then I bring my tail back. Look how much extra there is, a whole half inch. <laughs> Luann Johnson says, turn the die upside down, blade facing up. Um, so I don't know about like that. I do know people that die cut, I call that upside down. I, you could try that. I generally would add a shim before I do that, because I don't know the upside down my plate it cuts into it different so it, it might work better on your machine upside down that's a good point so you guys saw i had a, another piece of tear and tape ready and put that right over the top otherwise it would want to fall apart so now i'm going to flip this over and do the exact same thing on the other side making a little loop bringing my tail back and then putting this tear and tape probably cut it just a little bit too big so I got my tear and tape on both sides like that. Um, you may even need to do, oh, we haven't even used glue dots much tonight, but what I was gonna say, you might take a glue dot and sneak that right in there and that will help shut that. And we're good over there, I think. So we'll save that. So now we've got our label done, all right? So I'm gonna prep that with dimensionals and we're gonna do the glue strip here along the bottom so let's see here that guy is along the bottom and we're gonna do that same concept that we just talked about where I'm only going to take off the dimensional part on the bottom and the two right sides okay and we're gonna set the vellum foliage down goes right about there and now I'm going to put my label down right about here. Actually, I see that I have it a little bit closer to the left. So we're going to go, I'm going to center it on the DSP, I think, just like that. All right, so it's not glued up at the top here, right? So now I can stick in my things. So, hi, Christina, just dropping in. So this one, I'm definitely going to put a little dimensional at the top and then a little liquid glue at the bottom. And then this one's gonna tuck in. So now, because I have my label there, I can kind of figure out, well, how do I wanna do this? And then my flower, flower, is gonna go next, and it's gonna tuck in there. You may need to just trim off a little bit like that. I didn't even put glue at the bottom because when I peel off that dimensional, it's going to catch it. So that goes right about here. And then these, this guy's gonna sneak in here. Now you probably don't need all of that, but we're, let's see if we hit the bottom. Yeah, they are gorgeous, Christina, I definitely agree. Thanks everybody for helping Laura out with some advice on the plates. All right, so then this is gonna sneak in here like that. And thanks for sharing, Christina. And then this one is last. like putting a floral arrangement together, guys. And then this one I've got, so 
that one is in further, but this one, I think I might leave it like that. Oh, no, let's just put it all in over there. So now that I've got that stuff under there, I'm going to peel off the dimensional backs on that last one. And then that will help hold those couple things down. And our ribbon tails need to get cut. So we're going to cut this one at an angle this way. And this one that way. Oh man, it's coming together. Look at that. All right, iridescent pearls are this one. So you guys should have three. You'll have a big one, which you should most sweetly put in the center of that flower. And then there are two, let's take it all the way out. There's two small ones and they fit on our label right there. Depending if you stamp that sentiment, um, but I love these pearls. You guys, these are one of my new favorite embellishments. They're iridescent pearls. I for completely forgot when I ordered my whole pre-order for this catalog. I didn't even see them there. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, look how pretty those are. All right. It's pretty. I love it. So, and then our inside has a little flower, which matches our flower here. So... That one was fun. You guys, we got three done now. So we've got two horizontals and then we've got the one vertical. Okay. We've got one more to make. So Wendy, because you're on the team, you should have the PDF tutorial in your inbox. I emailed it to you Monday night, but I'm also going to put it in the team group because everything goes in the file section on the team group. Um, I'll have that in there by Saturday as well. So, all right, you guys, we're on to the last one. I love this one so much. I love it, love it, love it. So I have a little trick for this one on how I put mine together. And let's see, we have one kit left, you guys. I need to take a drinky drink. Let's get some water. The girl's getting thirsty. Look at all the hearts. Yay, woohoo. Hi, Carolee Crab. All right, you guys, here's our last one. All right. We have here... A blue base so so we had two whites and a navy and make sure you burnish your edges and it's a vertical card again you should have from what we uh, what we stamped earlier you should have um, off to the side your other little spriggy thing and one more of these foliage things okay we did those earlier in the night, so they're done. You'll have a little stitched square from Stylish Shapes. You'll have two white mats that are the same size, four by five and a quarter. One is for your outside, one is for your inside. This is the one that has a little vellum one. It's got a vellum one, a long skinny blue one, and then the little gray one, okay? You have a piece of designer paper and it's about two inches by three and 13 sixteenths. This is from the Basic Borders dies and that is a stitched, it's like upside down diamond-ish, <laughs> not diamonds, tri triangles kinda. And then um, this one is a three and 13 sixteenths by maybe like three and a half and it's embossed with the fern. And that'll go here, up there. And then you have nine inches of ribbon. And what you can do is either keep it together or cut it in half. And so I like it cut in half, so that's ready. On this, you can see a difference between these two. You can, I think, see a difference. <laughs> this one is the, there. Now you can see how white, like there's like tone on there where this one doesn't have it, that is accomplished by using the white ink pad and a dauber. So you wanna open the white ink pad up and you're going to use your dauber. So figure out top and bottom. This, they just got put in the folder. All these ferns are going all different ways. So there's really no top or bottom, but these are going this way and then these are popped up. So I definitely want the ones that are popped up up. And then I'm gonna figure out where I want it I know this area gets covered up because this area gets covered up. 
I generally start there. I kind of go off the edge or like on the back side with this. <clears throat> and then I start where it's going to get covered up in case it's too thick. And so what you're going to do is lightly hover over. And then you need more ink. You go back and get more ink. I always go back to the home base and make sure it's not too dark. You would rather get more ink than push your dauber harder. If you push your dauber harder, it's going to ruin the dauber more. Thanks for sharing, Philly. So you can see I didn't do this area over here. I've done around here. And now I'm gonna do this area. You don't push very hard. If you push hard, it's going to be really dark. So now you can kind of see that it popped, it pops it up a little bit. It doesn't pop it up, but it makes it the, the definition of it up here. I love doing this on embossing folders, <laughs> like just putting a little bit of color over the top just to give definition to the embossing folder. So that's what we did with the white ink. <laughs> and um, we need the blue ink. And so we're gonna stamp a sentiment. So there's one left in here and it's hello there. You called nobody's home. <laughs> Adele made it to the show tonight. Okay, so hello there is right here. When you stamp this, you want to make sure you don't stamp it right in the center. It is closer to the top. Okay, so it's going to go right about there. And let that have a second. Let's see what our inside has on it. Oh, the blue guy. Okay, so that's more near the top. So that's ready to go. And then on our inside... If you wanted to do this guy, that would be cool. We haven't done that yet, so let's do that on our inside. So that's with the gray granite ink. And you're gonna grab your sheet back because it might go off the edge of glory here. Okay, so that's our inside. Remember, it's a vertical card. All right, so I think that's it for stamping because you guys would have those two done from earlier. And now we've got a little bit of assembly. So I did have a method to my madness with the assembly of this card to get it just like that. <laughs> so let's flip these two over and we'll get those glued first. So this is our white inside and that will go in here. Hi Tracy Sailor. I hope the move was successful. I think you said you were moving this past weekend. <laughs> All right, so that's there. And then grab the other white piece. Figure out where you want the top and the bottom. I think I was going to have it like that. Okay, I got my snaggle tooths on the top. I can see them. So I always see that when I go to glue, that there's little hairs hanging off the paper. This one goes here. So this is almost a square, but it's not, you guys. So if you try to glue this like this, it's not going to be right. It definitely needs to go like that. And you have the border on the three sides the same. Don't worry about the bottom at the moment. Okay. I saw in class last night, primarily everybody glued these things first and then these things and put this somewhere in the middle and then added. I, when I made this, I actually worked from my bottom up and I'm gonna show you how I did that. So honestly, at the end of the day, however you decide to put it together is completely up to you, right? The main thing is just to get it put together. But what I did is I got this on first, but I didn't put any glue on the top. I actually glued my sides here, my bottom, okay? I left the top empty. And actually what I did is I put a little piece of tear and tape across there that I could pull off later, okay? So it's thinking ahead to the future with leaving that there and just pulling it out in a second. So now this goes at the bottom like this and we are glued on the sides and the bottom. So I've got this pocket here, right? That I can dip things into if I want, <laughs> all right. So the next thing then is let's Stella this because it'd be good to get this stella Let's see where you are. I stella this whole, this Stella needs some love. 
think I used the majority of her up. And I, oh, there, she had a blow on. I just saw the whole thing went down into the chamber. I think she'll be nice and rehydrated here in a second. So let's see if it works its way down. So what happens with a cello pen, you guys, is if it starts to get dry, there's these two things. It says push and it says push. You got to push them. You saw me squeeze them. Everything runs down into the barrel of this chamber. And that's how you rejuvenate your Stella. Um, if the end, if that end gets empty, you can add rubbing alcohol to it. So now I'm getting Stella on here. So I don't know if you can see all that shimmeriness. That is Stella at her finest. Okay. So we're going to adhere this onto here. So that you can go from end to end. And that just, oh man. Oh, <laughs> none of the glue hit there. Yay. Okay. So that goes on here. Oh man, <laughs> I forgot to put the ribbon down. So hang on. See, this is why you guys watch um, and then make your cards later. <laughs> so I have the, the ribbon. Don't worry about that there's tear and tape. That If the tear and tape goes over, you can just roll it right back. But if we cut our we cut these in half. So I now I gotta be very careful because I got glue everywhere. But that goes on there. And then this one goes here. So I doubled it up because having one here is too thin. All right, so there's the one. And then the second one goes right either above it or below it. Okay. I'll put that there. And you guys know I like <laughs> My fingers have glue on them, so everything wants to stick to them now. So we're going to put a little bit more tear and tape right over the top of them. And we should have enough glue on there. So put this there. Now this can go on here like that. Okay, now we're back in business. We still have the ability now. Now this is where it gets good because... I did that because otherwise you're kind of guessing how high to glue this. So this is actually going to be flat over here. And what I would do is I do that kind of prepping thing. So I'm going to put my tear and tape right there so that it's ready to go. And I'm going to shimmy this down to right about here so that my H is just showing. And then I'm going to put my dimensionals. Honestly, you guys, if you find that, oh, I'm just going to start at the top and go to the bottom, that works too. I'm putting like three dimensionals on here. And then I don't even worry about the liquid glue at the bottom. I'm just going to hold this here. And now this will be able to slide in here. You can see I've got it kind of like that. And then this one also got some dimensionals on the back, like two of them. And then now I can kind of slide this in right there okay and then this is where I want it so I'm gonna go like that then there's three things left and they do need to get Stella so let's go ahead <laughs> get her out and <laughs> give her one last hoorah rah here so there and remember I can still stick these little guys right in there because I don't have this glued here so I'm gonna do the blue one first and I gotta be careful with this because I'm gonna put some liquid glue on here and I don't wanna slide the liquid glue all over. So I'm gonna try to pick this up and shimmy this in here off to the side. And then I did the gray one next. So I'm working from the bottom up. So the gray one goes next. So this is the first card I designed and I was just so in love with it. So there's this next one. And I can pick that up and place that where I think I like it. And I'm even hanging it slightly over because this one, I noticed that all three of those dies have different shapes to them, actually. And then the last one is the vellum one. Thanks for sharing, Linda Hunt. Um, <laughs> the Stella over the navy is so pretty. It reminds me of stars twinkling in the sky at night. Okay, so there's our vellum one. And then this is going to 
get tucked into here. And I kind of have part of it even hanging over the top here. Oh, I noticed here that I have that hanging over the top, right? So that was there. And then now, if you have your pick tool, that comes in handy. What you can do is you just lift that up, this little guy, and pull this right out. And then I think I'm going to add a teeny amount of liquid glue right on that corner. And then now that's set. Hi, Kathy Groves. All right, so now I'm glued down. I feel like I want one dimensional right underneath this guy. But now I'm pretty secure. Like this is all glued in and it to help me tuck it in. It got it exactly where I want it. Now we can flip this over and then that gets glued to the front of our card. And then by putting the navy around here, it brings it home, I think. And we're almost done. So there's that. And then we have some pearls. The, you should have a big pearl and then two small pearls. Put one there and then well, three was the number for me there. <laughs> All right. So I know that may not be exactly how you would have done it, but hopefully showing you the way I did it might open your eyes to see how you can get things layered and get them exactly where you want without guessing. Um, but that's the final product of what we just did. That is my favorite one, I think. <laughs> I love these colors, you guys. So if you had to pick a favorite, I don't know, this, the wreath one is so pretty too. Um, that one, and then there's that one is so pretty too. <clears throat> and then let's get this, make some room for our shows here, our, our stars, I should say. And then we have that one. So there we have it. Sun Prince. We made these cards in about, like, we did it good. It's not even like, it's quarter to eight. That's fabulous, you guys. The the favorite color is blue. Linda Hunt, you will love these. Lori loves the wreath. Laura loves the wreath. Arliss, hi Arliss, by the way. Um, Becky Gandolfo loves them all. I love it. They are fun, you guys. If you have this suite of products and you just sit down with this designer paper, some navy, white, and gray, and then these dyes and the stamps, you could just go crazy. Um, they're so pretty. I just, I, I had a hard time just picking, like, I know I loved that one. I think it's because it's the first one I made. It just, this reminds me of a skirt, like a ruffling on a table, kind of. I don't know. It was so cool. I had fun with the wreath on that one. This was my third one to make and I just couldn't stop with the ribbon. And then this one was just, I loved cutting the flower and just putting the little flower there. I just, I needed something on the corner and it was just perfect. So and Patsy almost finished them all. That, yay, that's awesome. The last is your favorite, and Teresa loves them all. Has so many hearts coming through, yay. Very cool, you guys. So as much fun as these were, I'm gonna thoroughly enjoy doing these cards with you too next week. These are just like the blue, or the pink, like this navy with the pink, and like these navy, or the pink and yellow, so pretty. These are going to be so much fun to make with you next Thursday as well. So oh, I know a bunch of you guys got this um, product. And so I can't wait to start seeing some of your creations um, when you share it on Sunday, when you do share it Sunday. Like that's where we get to see some of the stuff that you're making. I love seeing that stuff. So you guys did good. Um, Francis, it wasn't a race and you didn't need to finish any of them. So don't feel like you didn't do good if you didn't get them all together. Vicky too, or anybody else that was new. It, this video is just to show you how to put them together. You are not intended to keep up with me by any means. Um, hopefully you saw my little tips and tricks on how I assembled them that help you when it comes to putting them together. So that's the purpose of the video is to show you underneath the skirt. <laughs> uh, and it might or it might not have a slip. <laughs> so, um, so.
So they yeah, had, they were fun. I don't want to put these away, but these, you guys, how, how it works is I give away the cards that I make live with you. And so I have the let's just stamp from last month. No. Oh, I messed up. Oh, so I meant to do the monthly cards from last week, Thursday, but instead I did the drawing for the let's just stamp card. So I have the winners for let's just stamp. And so when I, the next time I'll do the monthly cards. So what happens did I did get one and you did four. Oh <laughs> yes, Hilda now I did do four, but I could do these in my sleep. <laughs> I knew what was going on and I had all my stamping done already. So, um, do you do a prize and call my name? Yes. So, um, so I have the let's just stamp, uh, cards. How you get into the drawing is, uh, if you comment, basically, um, liking and sharing is awesome. But for the drawing is if I see your name, what I do is I, I run my finger through the phone and I stop and where I stop is whose name gets picked for the cards. That's like the easiest way. I know that Jean Terwilliger gave me a, an app to, um, Maybe make it easier, but I haven't looked at it yet, Jean. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, so all right, let's flip down, you guys. And this is what we did on Monday. So if you missed it, we did the Let's Just Stamp with the Painted Poppies. Um, so Diane has two kits left. I don't have any kits left. Um, but if anybody's looking to pay for the kits for this, you're welcome to. I'm sure she would even take an order. Uh, the order would need to go through her, though, not me. So you can't use my host code to get these cards for free. You, we'd have to connect and get you Diane's host code. Um, or if you wanted to pay for them, too, they'd be $20 um, with mailing. And she's already left them here or is planning to leave them here, and I can mail them. So there are two card kits left for this class that was Monday called Let's Just Stamp. So, da -da -da! drum roll, please. Um, Barbara said that that was her favorite card so far. Me too. I love them. Marilyn Edens, you are the lucky winner of this sweet sorbet mixed with basic black. Da -da -da -da! Winner, winner, chicken dinner of the poppy here. Happy birthday goes to Sharon Posadny. Woohoo, Sharon. I have your address. Marilyn, I don't have your address. Da -da -da! This beautiful, beautiful sympathy card goes to Georgine Williams. So congratulations to Georgine and Sharon and Marilyn. Uh, I will need Marilyn's and Georgine's addresses to mail these cards out to them. But Sharon, I've got yours. So congratulations to you three lucky ladies. The half off bundle from sharing the VIP group. Um, so this is the um, every month, the sharing the showcasing video. If you go into the Cards by Crispy, Cards by Christine VIP page and comment that you shared that gets your name in for the drawing. And then the first person drawn gets first dibs at getting this at half off. And da -da -da, that month, this month goes to Hildenal Vilchez. So Hildenal. If you are interested in this at half off, you just let me know. We'll make it happen. I'll get you the pricing and then the shipping. And if you um, don't want it and you want to pass it on to the next person, you just let me know that too. But you get first dibs at this. Cool. All right. So that's that prize. Um, we're going to do the door prize for, nope, we're going to, yep, we're going to do this door prize. Um, not door prize, just a drawing prize. And I gotta get my sign up sheets here because they're buried already. So we have two random number generators we're gonna do. And <laughs> it's always a hot mess around here afterwards, you guys. So um, the, you guys, sun prints went this way and then up. It jumped over these two classes. It went up and it went over. And there were 29 of you guys that placed orders to get the class for free. So we're going to do a random number generator, put 29 in here, and see who wins. And then the prize will get mailed with their next package going out. Generate, holy Moses, number three. Okay, I need a pen. Number three was at the beginning, Barbara Barco. Woohoo! I think she joined us earlier and then had to leave. So congratulations to Barbara. She gets a door prize. Uh, and then we had... Oh my gosh, I had Pat, Patty, and Pat. So that, that, that was the most common name for people who placed orders. Um, awesome, I love it. I like, there, I, 
I'm uh the names that get duplicated, you guys. It's like they're the like to me the most common names. <laughs> but then I only have one Lynette now. <laughs> and there's only one Sylvia. But so I had 14 people that placed orders. So on free shipping day, which was this past Tuesday, if you placed an order over $75 you got your name in for a drawing and you use my host code or you gave me your order personally. You got your name in for a drawing for the stamp set, which is, it is um, in the new holiday catalog. There are dies that match it that you can get for free um, with a celebration purchase or like a hundred dollar purchase during celebration. So 14 people, you guys, that's awesome. 14. We're going to click the word generate. Ready for it? Da -da -da. Got to hit the word generate. Number eight. Beverly Smith. Woohoo. Lucky girl. So Beverly, I will be shipping this out with your in color club. Um, your next in color club purchase, which is going out very soon. I will have that in the package for you. So congratulations to Beverly and to Barb. And we had Sharon and Georgine and Marilyn. I think I hope I didn't forget any buddies stuff or talking about anything. Um, yes, next Thursday is going to be amazing, you guys, with the hues of happiness. Um, yeah, very good. Um, yes, Hilda, let me know. Reach out to me privately. You, put, you said OMG, I love it. So if you are wanting that, you just reach out to me and I'll tell you. It's basically half off plus the tax and then um, shipping. And I'm trying to think if we have anything going out to you, if we can wait and consolidate it with something or if you want it right away. So um, yeah, we figure that out as we go. So um, yeah, did I forget? Let's see here, let me get back into Facebook. I got, Somehow I got out of the video. <laughs> All right, congratulations to everybody. You guys, um, it has been a blast. I thoroughly enjoyed making these cards. They were so pretty to make and like look at while we were making them. I hope that all of you that got these to-go kits from me, enjoy making them as well. Um, get them put together. I have that class card challenge that if you make the cards, <laughs> I love seeing the cards that you make them. Um, it's like the very first post that is in my Facebook page. Uh, you post a picture of your cards from, it's either June or May. So it's a month in the past or the current month. If you share a picture, you get your name in for a drawing. And I do a drawing at the end of, or at the beginning of the month. So um, so get those cards made, you guys, and share pictures. And if you make them exactly the same, great. If you change them up and make them different, great. I just want to know that they got made up. <laughs> All right. Oh, I think we did it, guys. Um, I always like to pause and think, what did I forget? Because I usually roll through stuff so fast. That's just my nature. I think <laughs> I move a mile a minute. Um, so Angela, I have your ink, paper, scissors here. I, I saw that you just commented, Angela Knutson. If you're watching, I have your ink, paper, scissors ready, actually. Um, if you want to come get it tomorrow or if you want to coordinate a time um, that's different, just let me know. But I was trying to let you know that I was going to message you that today. So, all right, you guys. Joanne can't wait for her Stella to arrive. You're going to love Stella. Um, when you get a Stella, you have to um, take the little black ring off and then squeeze the Stella juice into the barrel or to the chamber before you get started. So, all right, you guys, I'm lingering and I don't know why. <laughs> I think I'm so excited that these cards turned out so great. I hope you guys really enjoyed them. Um, I don't have any kits left. And just a reminder, the PDF tutorial will be in the store by by Saturday, okay, by noon on Saturday, if not sooner. So, all right. Oh, you're very welcome, Laura. I hope that everybody helped answer that question. I think I think it was you, Laura, that asked about the dyes and the, the shimming and I'm getting them to cut better. So if you guys need anything um, and you're watching this as the replay, just know that if you ask questions while it's during the replay, I generally don't go back to watch and check comments that were made during the replay. So if you have any questions or you need anything, you need to tag me. Um, but Facebook is always stupid about showing me stuff in my newsfeed and I don't catch it. So the easiest, best way is always to reach out to me via text, email, um, Facebook message. I'll tell you, calling is great if you catch me. Um, if you leave me a voicemail, then also leave me a text mail or send me an email because I will definitely see texts and emails before I see voicemails or I should say listen to voicemails. So just a little insider note there. So all right, you guys. Woohoo! Hi, Elizabeth Ray. 
You guys, I'm gonna sign out for now. Lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you. Go back and watch that showcase video that I did if you wanna see what's coming up for July and reach out with any times you wanna sign up for class or figure out getting your name on the list. All right, you guys, love you a long time. Bye. Oh, Penny, I wore my Mario shirt for you today. I gave my brother the Mario card for his birthday this past weekend and he absolutely loved it, Penny. I was so proud to give it to him and I told him that you made it and we exchanged cards and um, he was very happy to get it. So I should have gotten a picture with him holding it. But anyways, that was a PS, you guys. <laughs> PS, more information. Hugs back to you, Carolee. Bye, guys.